I will protect you in the midst of the storms. In the midst of chaos, I will protect you. This is the word that the Lord has shared with me. And this is what he's having me share with his people. I will protect you in the midst of the storm and in the midst of the chaos. Guys, there's a lot of things that's coming. There's a lot of changes that's going to be coming. And you're going to feel afraid. But God is saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what's happening. Don't be afraid of the things that may come. Don't be afraid of the changes and the chaos and all that you're going to hear that's happening. The Lord is saying, I'm going to protect you in the midst of it all. If you be still and trust me, you will be protected. If you run out from under my covering and you run out from under my wing and you run out there trying to follow what everyone else is doing or what everyone is doing to protect themselves or being fearful of what is to come, that's how you're going to get destroyed. God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The word of God says, you shall not, you shall drink. If you drink anything deadly, it shall not harm you. Nothing that is deadly will harm you. Nothing shall harm you. There's a fear that is very prevalent right now. And if I said you can pick up serpents and if you drink anything deadly, it shall not harm you, then why are you afraid? God is saying, I never meant that you're going to literally pick up poison and you should literally pick up a serpent. But the Lord is saying, why are you afraid? He's saying, don't fear. Do you know how many things that you and I have actually ingested? that there was something wrong with it. It doesn't matter how many labels you read to see how much preservatives and sodium and how much sugar and how careful you are and if you're a vegan and if you're go, you've gone organic. That cannot stop anything. It is my power. And there's a lot of things that we have encountered. God is saying that's his power. And there's a lot of things you and I have had before us that by the power of God and when you graced your food and when you blessed your food and even when you forgot to bless your food, it was cleansed. You have no idea how many times you've stood in a supermarket with a killer right behind you, with a kidnapper in the next aisle but I guided you and I protected you. You have no idea how the pestilence has walked by night, but they could not come near your dwelling. How many people, how many people God is saying someone was plotting to hurt you and to rob your home, but I allowed something to happen where that person was apprehended and arrested that day or diverted in another direction. There are people who plan to do something, do some sort of mass killing and things of that nature. And God said, I did not allow them to wake up that day. So the Lord is saying, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. He is our refuge and our fortress. A fortress is a safe, a solid and fortified place that keeps you safe from the outside enemies, the outside elements that will bring harm. It's time to get deeper into your prayer and into your word. Stop looking at what you see and you're hearing on the news, on social media, what people are telling you, telling you to be afraid and, oh, don't do this and don't do that. God says, look to me. 
Psalm 121 says, I will look to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who makes the heavens and the earth. I've heard there's a translation that says, I will look to the mountains from when comes our help. But no, the proper translation is I will look to the hills. There's a difference between a hill and a mountain. A mountain is normally very rocky and there's your climbing and there are hard surfaces. But a hill is posh. It's green. You often find water cascading near the hills. The hill is dense with vegetation and shade. So we're going to go with that. We're going to look to the hill. God is our, not only is, is he a high place where we can be protected and kept, but he's also a place where we can be nourished. We can be given shade. We can be given, um, we can be replenished. We can be vitalized. We can be strengthened. We will find rest in the hills. We will find a babbling brook in the hills. The hills will cover us and keep us. This is the nature of our God. There's a lot of people that's so afraid to die. And they're afraid of death. And they're afraid of this. And they're afraid of that. And watch out for this. Oh, they're going to try to do this to you. Oh, they're going to try to do that for you, to you. When was the last time you heard our God saying that to us? Be careful now. Oh, they're going to do this. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because he says, trust in me, look to me. I am your shield and your buckler. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. God does not make you worry. God is not a part of the worry committee. God is not a part of the fret committee. God is not the fearful, cheerful. He's not going to be, told, oh, this going to hurt you. That's going to hurt you. Oh, be afraid of this. Oh, be careful of that. Though, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for God is with me his rod and his staff they comfort me so God wants you to have an all out trust in him stop being afraid of what's going on around you nothing can enter your body and harm a child of God you think your mask has been keeping you all this time it's the power of God. And I'm not telling you not to wear your mask. There's some spiritual white herbs out there. I'm not wearing a mask, okay? That's fine. Me wearing a mask, someone else wearing a mask does not mean they don't have faith in God. We're simply obeying the law of the land. And as long as the law of the land is not telling me to, to uh, the laws of the land is not telling me to to denounce my God and to denounce my Savior. I don't have a problem putting on my mask. We are the example and we are the witness, guys. Even Jesus said, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God. My heart belongs to God. My allegiance is to God. I will obey God. Wearing a mask is not being disobedient to God. Because coronavirus is real. It's out there. It is truly out there. But what God wants us to do is not to be fearful, scareful. You're just full of fear. And you, you're listening to what's going on and all the stuff that people are saying. And oh, don't do this. Don't do that. If you do this, this is going to happen to you. My God does not give me a spirit of fear. Everything that's going on around, guys, even in your own home, if they want to walk, walk. If they want to talk, let them talk. Though everything seems to be shaking around you, God has got you wrapped in his arms. God has got you. Things will happen. Things will come. You will hear about a lot of things. Around you, there may be chaos. Around you, there may be a troubling. But God is saying, will you trust me in this? Do you not know that I am protecting you and I am keeping you and I am shielding you? 
You will only be harmed when you come out of my shadow. You will only be harmed when you come out from under my place of protection. When you want to do things your way, when you think you know a better way, when you start to listen to those that say, let's move, let's go back to Egypt, let's do things this way. When you're part of the murmuring and the complaining club, the complaining group, the unbelieving group, why are they complaining? Complainers are looking at things that's happening in the natural and they're just talking about it and giving it power. They're looking at the dead things in the natural, okay? But you begin to give life and you begin to give power and mobility and you begin to give it momentum through your mouth of talking about it and complaining about it and talking, oh, what, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. Well, you're beginning to speak out your mouth. And if you speak death, then you shall have death. Speak life. Trust God. The Lord is saying, in the midst of chaos, do not fear. Look to me. I am keeping you. I am protecting you. My angels have been assigned round about you and your children. This time of the shut-in has been a time of testing. It's been a time of of pruning on the inside and a time of purging. It's a time where many of you have seen what your patience level was and what you had. Others, you got closer to the Lord and others, you were further away from the Lord. Others of you, you realize you've lost your family connections. You barely know your spouses anymore. You barely know your children. Some of you, you realize you have a fear of being by yourself and alone. You began to realize how important your gym memberships were because it was a part of your norm because you feared being alone. You began to realize how much it was important for you to be seen by certain people, for people to see you in the gym, for people to see you in certain arenas or the places that you used to hang out with. And now many people have fallen into depression. God is saying this has been a time of truth, a time to really see what's within you and for you to turn to me fully. This time has also been a, a, a wake up call to those of you to see how much how much you obey and you don't obey. Many of you went against the laws. You did what you wanted to do. We are the example, my brothers and sisters. If they say to wear your mask, you wear your mask, my brothers and sisters. How does this take away from your salvation in any way? How does this say you don't have faith? Remember, in the word of God, in Romans, where Paul talks about, you know, the, the, the thing that you feel comfortable with and your faith, don't let your faith be an offense to someone else. And he was talking about people who you may be comfortable eating all things, and then you may have someone else that's not comfortable eating all things. But because you have faith in God and you believe in your walk in God that you're going to eat meat and you're going to do whatever in front of somebody that it offends. Or if someone eats meat, you're going to condemn them for eating meat because you believe in eating something else. Remember, God says, remember in the, in the book of Romans, it talks about that, my brothers and sisters. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find it because I was just reading this yesterday. I was just looking at it, guys. You need to be very, 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 very careful. Let us be very, very careful, guys. The things that we're doing. Let not your faith and what you believe in be a cause to stumble, cause someone else to stumble, guys. Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord. Here it is, guys. It's Romans 14. I'm going to start at 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. Okay? Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify one another. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Okay? 
It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Check this out. Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Have thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Now here they're talking about meat and they're talking about food. Okay? But here we're talking about some of you that you are just disobedient. You've been disobedient to what they put out in your jurisdictions. And so you're walking around and you're doing all these things and you're bringing fear on other people who are afraid because, well, I feel confident not wearing a mask. I feel confident not doing this and that. And guys, I'm not here to be an advocate for the mask. But what the Lord is showing me, guys, is that you need, if you have faith, have it to thyself before God. Put on the mask to go to the supermarket. It's not hurting anybody. It's not killing nobody. The exception will be for those of you that you may have some sort of claustrophobic, you know, anything on your face. That's different. I believe that there's some, there's some, they give you some wiggle room with those things. But let us not be the ones that's being defiant during this time. Many of you, you have been like vigilantes during these times. And this has not been pleasing to God. You had a hard time. You had a hard time adhering to the directions that they told you to go into. The arrows that said only go this way. Remember when everything first started? Those little social distancing boxes. You just are not following that. Because I have faith in God. That has nothing to do with following the instructions in the store. You understand that? There are many of you that you were just defying. You're the ones you was arguing with everybody about wearing masks. You were the ones that when they said only you can take only one bottle of water, you were arguing with them trying to take more. Or they may say only two of this specific item, you're trying to get more. And you may have also been that person that when everything first started, you cleared all the shelves off with all the water, all the bread and everything. Before they started putting uh, um, a limit on it, you just cleared everything. You didn't care about anybody else behind you. So all of these things are things that you need to look back on. And God has shown you, some of you, you did not have faith during this time. And you still don't. And you're glued to the television and everything that's going on. You have so much faith in God when it comes to not doing certain things. But you're glued to the television. You believe in everything. You're stuck to it. You're more stuck to what's going on in the news and on social media than the word of God. And when you get caught up in these things, that's when you're going to be driven to try to do things and where you're going to find out that you're thinking you heard from God and you have not. You're simply walking in carnality. It's going to get you caught up. You end up walking out from under the south, walking out from under the protection of God. The Lord is saying, no matter what is going on in this world, look to me. No matter what is being said to you, look to me. No matter what people are saying, people are saying, come, come this way. This is the way to go. Learn to be still. And sometimes when God says it's time to move and everybody's saying, no, 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 we need to stay here. You need to move when the Lord tells you to move. God is saying, no matter what is going on, I am with you. I'm going to protect you. Despite all the chaos and all that's happening around you. The Lord said, if you stick to me, if you follow me, if you obey me, you will be kept in perfect peace. My angels are encamped round about my children. Those who trust me, my sheep, my children, you are covered and protected. This is the word of the Lord today.